blacked out and forgot that she was in her early 20s when she was on. It's not because she looks it. No. It's just like. Cause no, I, I wasn't know, going no. there. I'm preempting the comment. Hey everyone, it's Mira Mangle. And it's Scarlet Sinai. And welcome to another Mangled Morning. Woo! Scarlet. Ah, yes. Wrapped in red. Yes, girl. Very signature Scarlet wearing Scarlet. Scarlet, <laughs> there you go. you're wearing Scarlet, well, Scarlet. Uh, one of our first flyers way back in what? 2017-18? Yes. For our game nights, you're wearing this dress. Literally this yeah. dress. And I found it packed away. You know, she can live again. It's let's a cute her, dress. Yeah, let's give her another moment. Red always works. Thank you. Yeah, I that I agree with. Absolutely. So does hot pink. I was gonna say, you look amazing. I love this look. And it's like a little different. You've refreshed it even more somehow. I, I love said that. I added more crap to it. Yeah, it looks good. Very drag. Right? Going back to the flyer thing, I don't think I've ever worn that little scrabble dress that I'm wearing in that flyer um, on the yeah. channel. I don't think I've ever worn that. No, that's real. It's like one of a handful of cocktail dresses that were like never to perform in, but it was like, we, we used to, what we would call a cocktail round before yeah. the show. Right. And especially at certain bars where like, there was a crowd at the bar, but maybe not at the show. Mm -hmm. And like, you're like, I'm in the show today. You better come you back better. here. Yeah, you have to you you know, come over to the other side. Exactly. You to learn how to talk to strangers and people and, and drag and try to convince them to come see you. You're right. The girls on today's list don't have to convince anyone to come see them because they're winners. Ooh. This is a fun video and a fun idea that we did well over a year ago now at this point, but mm -hmm. you and I did not do the video. No. I did the video with Chloe, and it's one of my favorite Chloe moments on the channel ever. The infamous moment where almost at the very end of the video, end of the list, we've been talking for a solid 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. She goes, wait, what? what's this list? Oh. So good. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like because we're Amazing. both women of a certain age, talking about age today might have a different layer to it. Oh, right. It you resonates know? more with us because it's our reality. We've lived more of the ages on the list. <laughs> yes. We'd make it, we'd be towards the end. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at every winner of a Drag Race franchise, but they're going to be grouped by the age when they won the season. Ooh. To see if we see any specific patterns. When we did this before, we did, but we've had well over a dozen winners <laughs> since then. You're right. Because last time we did this, there was three particular ages that had a tie for like most winners at that age. Uh -huh. I want to say it was like 28, 29, and 37. But then right after we did the video, Sasha Colby won. So then for a brief moment in time, 37 was number one. It was the magic number. It's not a spoiler for being number one today because it has been dethroned as of right yeah. now. Season 16 has a top four and we don't know the winner yet. We'll Ooh. look at their ages first to see which one is more likely just based on historic Ooh. patterns. We're like AI, except for not A or I. I was like, we're like AI with like an algorithm. I was going to say, like, we're pretty artificial. <laughs> like, that's true. Not much real that you're looking but at. But intelligent, questionable. Right. But we're going to figure out something. Artificial, <laughs> a, we're AQ, artificial queens. Sure. Damn. Oh, I feel attacked. Oh. Drag Race is known for like curses and things like the Rusical <laughs> Curse. And uh, clearly now Marina being told, tw she was told twice that she was oh. born to do drag. That's turning out to be more of a curse than it is a win. There's only been one winner to actually You're win the season so after that. Right. The but before we get started, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video, and join the Patreon where you can see all kinds of additional content you can't see on YouTube. Plus, you're helping support the channel. Now you can also support the channel by tipping on even more Cash App, like Julian B, who said, made me cackle when I, I called apparently Vivian Panay the Vivian. Yes. <laughs> I mean, especially in that particular video, it was like struggle to come up with some of the names, to remember the names. Like, and it's, it's not because I don't remember them. It's also the amount of new mm -hmm. queens I've met in the past couple years. It's yeah. just unreal. Like, y'all are lucky I remember even part of the name. Right. Because there's over 500 queens or something, right? I'm sure. It's just right. insane. So, the Vivian is actually pretty good. There you go. All I did was put the in front of it. Her there. name is Vivian. That's true. <laughs> Julian B's been with us for a long time, too. Yeah, definitely. Also, Ryan G, who said you and Scarlett should do a Drag Race fantasy season. That's mm -hmm. the second time this week we've been told to do a fantasy season. There you go. It sounds like we have to do it. Yeah. Some version of it. Let's listen but, to the people. Uh, Ryan's version of the fantasy season they want us to cast is both picking only one queen Ooh. from each season to create a dream season. Ooh. That would be something you would call Battle of the Seasons for yeah. sure. That would be fun. Fun, right. That'd be easy too. Like, Ooh. I'd be able to do that in a minute. Oh. Like, make a list in a minute. Damn. Let's do it live. Let's what? do it now. Right. right. <laughs> like, oh God. Now you can also tip using the YouTube things, which we'll go over some of those at the end of the video. Ooh. So first, let's look at the potential winners for season 16. Q and Plain Jane are both 26. Mm -hmm. Nymphia is 27. 
And then Safira is 34. Oh, yes. That's why she's always giving you mother. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> also, like, I don't know. To me, 27 and, and 34 aren't that right. different. No, it's what, like, I don't know. Oh, my seven God. Seven years age difference. It's not that I much. started drag at 27, and I'm 34 right now, about to be 35. Ooh, oh, my gosh. Ooh. Like oh, am I going to win? <laughs> <laughs> right. I split the I'm difference. Not season. But all right. We'll have to keep this in mind as we go through this list. It does make sense that Safira is exactly the same age as me. Why? Because you're just like the archetype for everything? <laughs> yes. I'm like, why? Why does this fit? Yes, Tell me and, how this fits. Yes and no. Um, because I, I connect with her a lot. Oh, like okay, I gotcha. always see her per- performance and like think it's the best. And I... I just yeah. see her, like, as the boss. Like I've said on here many times, she's a queen that makes me want to, like, step my game up and oh, be a better queen. For sure. She's definitely, like, a queen's queen. Like. For sure. The queen, queen's, like, Envy Peru, you know. Like, uh, yeah. make me want to be even better because I think they're so good. Yeah. Let's get into our list, and we're going to start off with the youngest and work our way up all the yeah. way to the oldest queens of all time. Woo. <laughs> and starting off our youngest winner ever, Crystal Versace. Yeah. 19 years old. We were just talking about that whole curse thing. She is the one queen that has ever won one that um, Bruce challenge. said you were born to do drag. Oh, no, you're right. Yeah, she was, yeah, she's one of the elite on that list. Everyone else seems to be cursed. Right. I mean, and this But was, she did win the first two challenges. Not only was she so young, but she's just so polished. Like, most of the times, like, the oh, young yeah, queens... yeah, professional. Right. Most of the times, the young queens, you can start seeing the cracks as the season keeps going a little bit. You can see where the experience and the non-experience kind of start playing in. She had her but look together her. and makeup together every week. The level of professionalism that she had already developed and... Oh, excuse me, guessing. <laughs> and the level of talent that she possessed. If you think about the lip syncs towards the very end when she's actually in the bottom or... Mm -hmm. lip syncing for the crown like those lip syncs really show her talent yeah but as a whole for the season it doesn't really even show how good of a like how good she is right we've got to see her live at after drag con and got to meet her too and she's very sweet she came up to us yeah um and i wrote in i've got her an uber one night when i was in dallas filming with blue and Janie. that is so fun so i spent some time with her she's sweet she actually was very mature for her age Mm -hmm. even back then she just carries herself in such a way where it's like age is Age disappears. She's just very timeless and very, a very classic, strong drag presence. It's irrelevant. To, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter how old she is. Right. It's so cool. Because she's a professional. And like she had that one moment where she did kind of show her age with Victoria in that first episode or in the beginning of the second oh. one. She kind of knew in the moment that she was trying to be funny and it didn't work. Uh, right. But like she apologized right away. Yeah. And it was very sincere. Yeah. And she was the one to check Scarlet Harlot. Like, that's so real. Who was, you know, in her mid-20s. Like, she got that bitch together. She really did. Up next, two winners at 21 years old, Tyra Sanchez in Aquaria. Oh, wow. You know, speaking of somebody that comes across, at least on stage, as an older soul, definitely Tyra. Yes. Definitely Tyra. Because Tyra was giving you super model, giving you super polished put together fully looks, formed full yes yeah. in in doing things fashion wise that was honestly i feel like ahead of its time when it came to drag race and what we were used to seeing on the runway at that time her Just presentation odd. and how mm-hmm. that's impacted drag race going forward i think is underrated oh definitely definitely now in the workroom <laughs> she showed her age that's where yeah, yeah the young the youth um you know seeped out i think they both actually have more moments showing their youth than Crystal even did. Which oh, is for sure. Even more iconic for Crystal. <laughs> Not to keep going back to her, but right. I think Aquaria had the classic case of it showed a lack of depth mm-hmm. in her character. But I mean, her runways also, like Tyra, were just Impeccable. unreal. Yeah. And the a, aesthetic was there. Right. And a point of view. Yes. Point towards of view. the fashion that elevated it. It almost kind of set the stage for like this next generation if you think back to yourself at that age i couldn't fully form something like that that clear and that well right you know like it's just it's so impressive such an eye yeah up next 22 years old violet tchotchke yeah Ooh. some of these younger winners personality wise show their age but yes. again again just like the last two she acts her age when she opens her mouth but uh-huh. level of talent and the looks were just unreal a cut above yeah literally and also, in her own way, stepped up the game. I was gonna say, like, just the the fashion week mini challenge with the with the reveal. I mean, that changed everybody's life. You know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, 
plus her give up look with the bugs that was still like mm-hmm. oh my god probably the one of the best looks we've ever seen on drag race period right and speaking of point of view she was giving you the burlesque the tiny tiny way she was pushing but with her own twist yes like, thanks to very extremes yes. such an icon and yeah the fact that all that at 22 it's like terrifying actually as as an old person right i'm like oh my god like you're so tired if I was Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Costa Davis, I'd be mad. I'd be like, I've been doing this shit. Right. Oof. Like, I gotta hang it up. No. <laughs> up next, one. I think this is the first one where I'm like, oh my, I always forget that Lawrence Cheney at 23. But talk about old soul. I feel like she's our age. You right. know what I mean? Right. But no, she is but a it's, youth. That's crazy. But what? she ha- she does have that, like, spirit. Mm-hmm. And she is so caring. Speaking of that same trip I met Crystal on, I met Lawrence, too. Talk about taking care of me and mother. She made sure I got home that night. Like, she oh. gave me a ride. She checked in on me. I love that. She was mother. We've often talked about, like, the context of Ellie being her little sister. And Ellie was, like, 19. That alone give- makes Lawrence seem a bit older. But taking that away. Right. And even firsthand experience. Clearly, she is. She's more mother than I am. Right. The only thing I can think of on her season. I'd be like, I hope you have Uber. (laughs) The only thing I can think of on her season where her age did show was the times where she wasn't confident in herself. Yeah, she was Yeah, when she got in her own head, then it was didn't think she could do it. Exactly. Then it was like kind of like okay, yeah, the youth, the inexperience, the doubt, all of that. But that can happen to anyone too. Absolutely. Like I said, it's like I blacked out and forgot that she was in her early 20s when she was on. It's not because she looks it. No. It's just like, no, I, I wasn't know, going no. there. I, I'm just, I'm preempting the comment. Yeah. That someone might say. It's the maturity. Yeah. It's very that, like, old soul. How quick-witted, how she's able to banter with Rue. God, if she I was mean, that good on that season, imagine if she came back for an all winter season. Honestly. She jinx monsoon them all. She sure could. Mm -hmm. We're going to get into the section where all of a sudden we're going to see a lot of winners pop up. Cool. 24, I feel like, is the kickoff. We got three winners at 24. Anjali, Evie Oddly, and Drag One. Ooh. They all kind of broke new ground in their own way. First trans winner. First trans winner ever. Yep. On Drag Race Thailand Season 2. And then Evie and Drag One were both... Uh, alternative queens that were very much needed internationally and domestically. Absolutely, yeah. The, everybody on this screen flipped the script on their seasons, really gave people a run for their money, too, in unexpected ways. I think we really saw that. Well, Angelia was the performer, right, of, of her season for sure. But when Evie could keep up with Brooklyn and shine so brightly doing her thing, her alternative way, Holding up to a pop diva superstar on a, a pop diva superstar song. A Miss Continental. That moment I was like, oh, oh, okay. We need to pay attention. And that's, I think everybody kind of had moments like this. I feel like they're all very consistent as well. Yeah. Like even when they did falter, they made up for it in spades. If okay. they faltered. Actually, Evie and Angelina both mm-hmm. bomb Snatch Game. Mm-hmm. But... Um, they make up for it with that lip sync. You for, you almost forget about it. You forgive yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Up next, 25 years old. Oh. Talk about some distinct winners. Jinx Monsoon the first time around, then Simone and Blue. Wow. I love, 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 love this. You know, these are all really kind of very different winners. But if you think about it, not really, because they're all so clearly realized in terms of who they are as a drag queen. Distinct brands and POV. Exactly. What their brand is, unapologetic to who they are, not, and also willing to take risks. Yeah. All of these queens were willing to just, like, you know, balls to the wall, like, go all out and and really do what they need to do to win. I mean, specifically... Okay, blue, right? She nerve. Whew, that was the nerve. Simone unapology unapologetically herself, even like winning all of her lip syncs, doing S- park and park. Right. Didn't she have to win? She had to lip sync like seven times. Yes. And, and won she, all of them. By walking around and pointing. Giving face. But it was iconic. And then you know, Jinx, she was that she was that underdog. She was the weird girl. She was the girl with the bat bat quote unquote bat runways. Like but here she was. But like stood behind them too. It. Like, yeah. had the nerve to stand up to Michelle and be like, this is who I am. We yeah. have different POVs. This is the confident group. Yeah. I love it. 
but brand is definitely yeah here we're f the brand is fully developed mm -hmm. up next 26 years old we got the vivian and willow pill the vivian is another one that i i it's not a uk thing but i do feel like she also gives older energy very that I she mean. was petty in the workroom a bit <laughs> yeah you know, she was talking about the other girls even before the whole Davina moment, mm -hmm. like she still was kind of like sizing the other girl. She was really like hard on Cheryl, I felt like, in the workroom. That's true. That's true. Things like that. Mm -hmm. But, oh, God, professional. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. The Viv was very shady. <laughs> Very shady in a lot of her own ways, but yeah, I mean, also two queens very strong on their own brand. Very different though, because I feel like yeah, very the, different. The Viv, like Lawrence, the reason why I think that they're older than they are, because like we said, it's not based on looks; it's how they approach humor it's almost so professional and a mature point of view yeah. that i just automatically equate that with like oh life experience or you know something like that whether it's political whether it's a roast whether it's self-branding whether it's anything like that mm -hmm. their humor is just so developed and strong yeah. that it gives the illusion of age. <laughs> the Vivian is really like a uh, ultimate chameleon in terms yeah. of the challenges. You don't see her, you don't see that particular approach, how she tackled it uh, coming. That's so real. And then with Willow, it's completely different. For how she presents herself in and out of drag, she's just young and fresh. All of her ideas seem new and fresh. So she's super confident. Her brand was very distinct. The brand is very there. In a way, I hadn't seen it before. Yeah, and her personality, episode one, two, I already knew her very well. Mm -hmm. And I think that talent show helped, that irreverent bathtub thing. Oh eating. my God, right? Um, it was so fun. And her vibe, like she had a vibe oh, that sure. like was chill, cool, but cared. Like she did yeah. care. It wasn't like to that level of like... <laughs> disassociating and didn't care to be there. She I don't, was very consistent. Right. I don't know if she's technically Gen Z, but to me, Willow Pill is like ultimate Gen Z representation of drag. Especially aesthetically. Actually, in general, yeah. Aesthetically and personality-wise. Next, 27 years old. Uh, this is our first one where the theme I see is controversy. Uh, we have oh. our first winner with no wins, Electra Bionic on Italia season one, Petita, the whole journey and just about every win Ooh. was controversial. The season itself was. And then Venus winning Canada season four was oh. a bit controversial as well. Wow. Ooh, yeah. You know what? Earlier this week, we were talking about Asian queens that didn't win the season that it felt like it was clearly them. That's why it was controversial because Aurora Matrix felt like it was like, oh, this is her yeah, moment. Yeah, that is so real. It did really see. I knew yeah. there was more queens that I was thinking about, but I just mm -hmm. didn't think international. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, the controversy is there. Now the controversies are all very, very different. And they're more circumstantial than, it's actually not anything to do with them, except for maybe Petita. I was gonna say, except for. Petita, the personality <laughs> and the way she interacted with the other girls was constantly a point of conversation. Mm -hmm. I lived for it all, but. It was good drama. It was really good drama. I don't know. I thought Petita was very the front runner. I didn't feel it was as controversial as the general opinion or mm -hmm. as the other queens in the competition felt. Uh, but there were weeks where it's like, well, it could have gone a different way. Now with Venus, this is like less controversial to me in terms of the surprise or anything. I agree. She was very consistent. Very, very consistent. And while Aurora was amazing, Venus was amazing as well in so many different ways. She had her own story. She had her own... Uh, She's the first indigenous winner ex from Canada. Exactly. So I feel like it was like all good choices. Now, Miss Electra. <laughs> The top, was... two, the top two are more like, the top two or two are the most controversial seasons ever. Yes. And they just happen to be the winner. Right, right. Electra, I mean, she's still to date our only and winner. hopefully with ever... forever yeah. reigning as the only winner without any maxi challenge wins. Right. She it's... was safe the whole season and it was very like, <gasps> what? Question mark? It was... How did this happen? Why did you make this choice? I wonder if she was surprised that she won. But she was very polished. She right. was really she's, together. She's beautiful. And she did win, I think, every single mini challenge. Oh, so, yeah, that's so know, funny. She, um, she's she Lucy LaDuke. <laughs> she's one of those people that gives people like Lucy hope, <gasps> like that it does mean something. There you go. Damn. Up next, this was last time around one of our top three in terms of most queens winning at 28. We've got our very first winner ever, BB Zahara Binet, Ooh. Trixie Mattel, Monet Exchange. Monet and Trixie have so many parallels. They both like initially placed sixth on their season. Oh. They both had their first win on All Stars, oh. you know, like, mm -hmm. and they both won at 28. 
Then Priyanka from Canada, season one. Another season one. And Myra from Sweden. Wow. So you got three season, season ones and two all-stars that play sixth on their initial season. Honestly. The theme that I see here is like iconic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's where we're getting now. It's not just branding. It's like some of the most iconic winners of all time. Clear brands, talk about personality. All of them have proven how good they are yes, at dragon and branding out. and being a superstar, even more so in mm -hmm. the real world, you know? Definitely, right. Yeah, these queens either came in with legacy records, you know what I mean? Like yeah. BB and Priyanka and Admira, or through them coming back between their original season and when they came back, they have built like, you know, empires and legacies right. and things like and that. And then BB did both because she also did it after she didn't win All Stars 3. First winner to come back. Right. First winner to come back. First winner and first winner to come back. Damn, yeah. When you think of winners, you think of some of these folks. Yeah, definitely. And um, that's why I think there's something about 28 as you get into your 30s, like right before then and, and, and then shortly after. That's why we're going to see the most winners in this section coming up. This is what I had a midlife crisis. It's a make or break for some people. It really Either is. you have that, like, late 20s breakdown and maybe you're still in that or you've just gotten over it and now you're like say, clicked in. You're either you figured it out or you're about to figure it out. Ex oh, that's even better. Up next, 29. This is the age currently with Alveda winning. She's the one that put it over okay. with the most winners. There's no other age that has this many winners. Wow. We got season four, Sharon Needles, Bob the Drag Queen, Sasha Velour, <sighs> Danny Beard from UK, wow. Pandora from Germany, mm. and Alveda from Belgium season two. Wow. I mean, super, super iconic people. Lots of artsy queens. I was going to say lots, lots of, of artsy, alts. all non-traditional queens here. And I then you got those. Bob the comedian. Right. I mean. Actually, Danny's a comedian too, though. Seriously, and yeah. All. Most of these queens were able to be very versatile and figure out a way to make it work in those maxi challenges. Mm -hmm. When it wasn't their strong suit, they knew themselves and their brand so well. They can make it work. They made it work. Right. Almost every time. Yeah, because I mean, even like Bob, fashion wasn't all the way there on her season, but she was never in the box. She did that robot look and made it work on roller skates well, in an Amazon bodysuit because she's entertaining. Bob, Pandora, and Alveda all had bottoms, but it was almost like very similar in terms of like either the the last challenge of the season or like one of the last mm -hmm. you know up next 30 years old you want to talk about like strong front runner oh. dominating the competition you got alaska yeah. shea coulee oh. two of the the best all-star winners of all time right paloma from france season one and nice. organza from brazil season one wow I they love are very that. similar in the fact that they're both fashion queens yes fashion queens, and were funny and just i mean mm -hmm. dominated the competition honestly all highly competitive people they were the queens when you saw the cast all you had to do is see the cast list the promo they were the ones who were like well Sticking they're gonna out. win like right. we watch out for them and they they did that yeah they proved that paloma i know is a very clear front oh. runner in that Never season. faltered. Right? Organza kind of like some of the 29 year olds faltered right at the very end. Mm -hmm. But we had seen her do like 11 challenges before that and do so well in <laughs> everything else. I think it was the roast that was what got her. Mm -hmm. It didn't even matter because like I knew she could do literally everything else. Right. Next, I think Woo! this one will top the last one. This Woo! might be the best one. I mean, <sighs> these are drag gods. Uh -huh. 31. Right. If you win at 31, you are a drag god. Oh. Envy Peru, Carmen, oh. and then Kiana. Oh my god, obsessed. Envy, I mean, Carmen, Kiana, one name queens. Literally, and some of the best, most perfect Gods, drag records. Goddesses. Ever. Talk about the, a sweep. Talk the, about just. Whew. These are queens that could replace the faces up here. There I would go. I would put these faces on the on the Mount Honestly, Rushmore. Honestly, oh my god. They gosh. are the, some of the best international winners, biggest yeah. names, best brands of all time. Of all, all time. Time. I mean, yeah, Incredible. it doesn't get any more perfect. There might be some that have more in the list later, but this is hard to top. Yeah. Cuz this is the most consistent. These are literally gods. They never Drag faltered. Gods. None of these queens had a hard time at all on their season and be right just no contest, uncomparable. Same thing with Carmen, was literally giving the girls the clothes that she brought and then making outfits before the challenge and then winning in them. Right. Kiana already had this huge international 
uh, reputation because she was already on a competitive show, Legendary. Mm -hmm. So she had a lot to prove slash potentially lose coming on. And, and then looked one up of, to her. Yeah, one of the best track records of, of all time. I mean, none of these queens ever faltered on the runway. Ever. And in fact, like talking about their track records, they all have some of the best track records of all time. Kiana like set a new level of being in the top or winning every single week and never, never, ever missing that. Mm -hmm. Carmen is the only one on here that has even a low placement, even mm -hmm. though she, she was never bottom two. Yeah. And that one low placement was Snatch Game, but we ain't never seen a Snatch Game where everyone but one person right. or two people uh, did did well. Right. Like she actually was hilarious. Mm -hmm. But they had to put someone there and she had already done so well that the expectation was too high for her to meet. And <laughs> she just was there by default. I wanted to point this out because I don't know if you saw this, yeah, but yeah, earlier this that. week, Envy posted a moment that the audience took of Sasha giving her her flowers. Yeah. I commented on it. I was like, these are things I've been saying for four years. Yeah. I've been saying that Envy Peru is literally that girl, like unmatched for the past four years. It, it comes across as silly or corny or like I'm worshiping a little bit too much, but I love that Sasha was like saying everything I've been saying. Yeah, really. She is that girl, the influence she's had. I always think about those stoned wigs and all that. Like, yeah, she, she didn't invent them by any means, right, but she right. brought them to the mainstream. Right, once she was on and everybody saw that, then it like made the all-stars, whoever, all winners, all of them. Drag around the world changed like, after that. Like pump up it like did. six levels to keep up with her. Envy Peru is literally like Helena Troy. Like if anybody was like gonna go into battle to fight for like a beautiful woman, I feel like she was like that woman, you know what I mean? Yeah. And full package, hilarious. Right. I don't want them to also be funny because they all have everything else. They have the beauty, the fashion, like- have it all. Bitch, and you're funny too? Like, oh God, I have to do so much now to like try to- <laughs> Like, I, cause you want to be better, yeah. but like, damn, you're setting the bar. Like, this shouldn't be right. Right. <laughs> this ain't right. <laughs> Shouldn't have it all. <laughs> that level of beauty. Right. To And then also that's to fair. be the funniest girl in the room. That's fucked up. They're like, yeah, they're the Beyonce. Ugh. They're Beyonce. But Beyonce ain't funny. That's Even Beyonce's that's not true. funny. <laughs> you know? 32, we go from 31 where it's like, God, drag perfection. I dare you to argue with it. Cause you will be smited by God. This next group online, have been some of the most controversial yeah, winners. Yeah, controversial for Jada sure. Essence Hall. I feel like people almost forget how people kind of backlashed they that really Gigi did. didn't win. I know. Drag Sethless, we know that journey, and Tia Coffee as well. The wow. two most recent All-Star uh, winners both won at 32. Damn. Back to back, a right. week apart. Yeah, so this is very, if you win at this age, then people might hate you. People, if you win at 32, people might tell you you don't deserve it. Damn. Isn't For that, real. That, I hate that that's the narrative, but that's literally... That's the narrative that's they got. That's each of their journeys. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember and how... And two people, of them had four wins each. Right. You know? But you're right. People were so pressed that Gigi didn't win for Jada's season. Plus, it was the whole virtual Zoom call of it all, too, which didn't help. But she did win that finale. Oh, absolutely. And she showed a, a lot more depth and heart in her season. Mm -hmm. Like, she, to me, she was clearly my winner. Yes. And that yes. finale, that orange finale look she won in, oh, it's beautiful. one of my favorites of all mm -hmm. time for Drag Southwest. I don't think that should have been controversial at all. And, I know. And Tia won the most actual maxi challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, and I agree that currently being fresh, it, it's not that I don't think that Tia shouldn't have won. It's mm -hmm. that I felt like it was Marina's season. Yeah. But I think, and I hope, time will do her justice. And she'll, I hope so too. she'll be one of those queens, too, that will, like, keep being that girl in the real world and proving it oh, and yeah. like owning it for sure up next 33 years old oh, this is a professional group yeah it we is. got trinity the tuck on all stars four jinx monsoon is the only queen to make the list twice because yes. she also won at 33. ain't that effed up she won drag race <laughs> twice before the age i am now and damn i mean well, she, could, she could win a third time by the time she's your say. age that's real. I mean, well, she's already won. I mean, but she she's could. at Carnegie Hall. She's on Broadway. She's on Doctor Who. She's won. She right. keeps winning. Talk about winners. Every week. Yeah. Somehow, some way. I would say that it's obviously called, caused a divide. They were all divisive. Winners. I was going to say, the others are all controversial. I mean, technically, this win of Jinx was slightly controversial in its own it right. Because yeah, because of the, whole of the lip sync of it all. Yeah, yeah just absolutely. like two. Yep. But then, you know, Trinity's the twinners. So right, people, that's a whole thing on its own. <laughs> people had feelings about the twinners. I think with Giselle, it was Miss Fierce Delicious didn't even get to, get, she just got eliminated. She didn't even get a chance to lip sync for it. Exactly. They just took her out. When right. she did the most wins and had the best track record overall. Mm. That was very weird. 
And the yeah. whole season was about her. Like, I know. <laughs> that's it. Don't make any sense. And they're like, sorry. It still don't. But I mean, very, very Marina. It's you know, yeah. very Marina coded yeah. in some ways. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then, um, uh, uh, oh God, what's her name? I know what is her name. Oh my gosh. Who is that? Uh, Miss Loren. Isis Avis Loren. Oh my God! From yeah. Down Under. Woo! This is more like the se- it's the season thing. It's back to yeah. the what was that age, where Electric was there? Like where there's a bunch of them where it's like, well, it's not necessarily them. It's the season. Yeah. It did logically make sense that she won, but mm-hmm. it was a rough season. It was a rough season, and and I think it does. I mean, it's mm. I, I'm it's not intentional, and I I don't want to call it out to put her down, but she's the first one where I first winner to come up where I was like. Who are you? What is that? I knew what season she won, but I did not remember her name. Right, right. But she definitely, of that season... Professional. Yes. She was the one where I'm like, I'm glad she's here. She had it the most together. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of Trinity, she is in that new Tubi movie, Slay. Yeah. We reacted to the trailer on mm-hmm. uh, Patreon. Did you get a chance to watch it yet? No, I have not watched it yet, but I think I'm actually going to watch it this evening. Okay. So I will report back. I do want to see it because that, that trailer was way better than I expected. I know it's so so cute. What's that twin, uh, Tarantino movie with the vampires at the bar? Dust till dawn. Yeah, it's very like drag race meets dust till dawn. The problem with drag <laughs> drag movies like this, the tone is hard to get right. Mm-hmm. Like to not take itself seriously, but also not go so far camp that it, I'm not even watching a movie. Exactly. <laughs> At least in the trailer, it had the right balance of, of that. Yes, you need to be able to give the the camp and the humor, but still build the suspense and you know get you in the spooky mood. Up next, 34 years old, Ketamine on Down Under season one, Isis. Uh, I almost said the same name again. Isis Avis Lauren. Isis Couture on yeah. Canada season two, and Ginger Johnson on UK Ooh. season five. Yes, I mean professional. I think is definitely the best way to describe all of them. Kita, we well, Drag Race on Under One was a whole journey on itself. But she was she was the one. She was the one for sure. Yeah, and honestly. Isis was such. They both are like those top two. Oh. I, I love that they both won in white. Like yeah. so charismatic. Yes. Like personality. You like you fell in love them. with them. You yes. knew them. Yes. They were the heart of this season. Yeah. While also just um, being front runners, in my opinion, for both for of sure. them. For Isis, she had to lip sync very early on mm-hmm. in the season. Like seeing her perform and be funny and charming and all that. It's like, okay, she's the full package. And the looks. Oh. I know. Oh my God, the looks are insane. It's so beautiful. I feel like Kita and Ginger, actually, in terms of aesthetic, they could be from the same family or something. Yeah, like, they have a similar aesthetic. <laughs> they do. But Ginger, talk about professional. Oh my Ooh. God. You didn't warm up to her as quick, right? But no denying the talent and all that, and like it, it just took a little bit more time to warm up to her. But when she popped, oh, there was no other girls there. Literally, I'm like, Ooh, okay, she's the runaway then. Up next, 35 years old, oh, yeah. Precious Paula Nicole, the winner. Uh, th- the first person that took away the crown from Marina, <laughs> Precious Paula Nicole, the Diamond from uh, Italia season two, and then season one of Mexico, Christian. Oh yeah, Peralta. Ooh, Christian and the Diamond dominated, slaughtered the other girls. Honestly, four and five wins. Professionals, I feel like is kind of the name of the game here as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Even Precious. Even Precious. She only won the one challenge. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, she was consistent. And she was known before as, like, a she, really famous impersonator. I mean, her one win was weird because it was in front of the person she impersonates and has known personally for years. Right. Little, little you want to talk about setup. It's probably, yeah, easier to impersonate somebody that Take, you... Taking away that one, that maxi win and that happening, she was really consistent throughout the season. Like, she oh, was really good. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And it really did feel like... It came down to a heart race at the end. Mm-hmm. I feel like that makeover really made a difference for her. That I think that all these Definitely. queens got to show heart. And I think that's yeah. it was professional, but they were able to show those unrefined edges. Definitely. You know. I mean, with Christian, too, we had a unique, the heart of it all, which was the fact that they were married to a woman. Yeah. Pansexual. Yeah, pansexual. So that was really cool. Pansexual representation. And openly talked about that and the struggles. And yeah. Th- I feel like they were all very open. But when it came to those maxi challenges, these girls never faltered. Yeah. Like they never even came. All three of them never even came close to faltering. There was okay. never a time where you thought they might be in the bottom. Right, right. No, they killed up. This is at the point where 
I mentioned Chloe earlier, we got to 36 and we saw the double Rajas. And this is where Chloe was like, wait, what is this video we're even doing? Because she was like, <laughs> Raja and Raja are both 36? Wow. No. Like, well, they're not. <laughs> they were. When they both won. Raja, it is a very, again, a very unique coincidence that both Rajas won at 36 years old. It's like the theme here is Raja. Your name right. is Raja. There so you go. if you're 36, your name is Raja, then maybe it's a good time to be on Drag Race. <laughs> I, Raja felt like an all star the first time around. Talk right. about game changer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she did that. Mm -hmm. It was very clearly, it was very clearly her and Manila. We as the public loved everything Raja did, mm -hmm. but the judges ate it up Whoa. even harder. Right. So it, it felt like it was hers to lose. Mm -hmm. The other Raja, Raja D. O'Hara, had a very different journey. It took her yeah. three times. Her third time coming back. Wasn't she the first queen to win uh, on her third time? I think so, yeah. Yeah, the third time's a charm right. thing. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's is the perfect example of how like hard work, consistency, and building yourself up really yeah. pays off. Because she came back each time and showed like new, more refined versions of her skills. She went home on a design challenge, but then she came back and was like doing the dress thing and sewing that in under a minute. She won like, all of them. Yeah, she had all the raw talent, but then she just had to work on building her skills. And then we finally saw the culmination of that. All Star 6, she came back and it was a whole new person. And yeah. that's why she popped on all cylinders. When she came back this time to actually win, it's like she didn't have anything to prove this time. She just proved she was still the same girl we just, you know, we thought she was. Yeah. Like it solidified that, which, yes. was, which was great for her. It was like a victory lap, honestly. It really was, yeah. I feel like if the tuck and roll with Kylie, that, that didn't happen. I mean, it was really close between them. Could have very easily been her. It could have been her, right? Moving on to 37. Still in the top three. I think it's tied with 28. With the second most wow, win winners. yes. Ooh, some of the greatest of all time. Bianca Del Rio, Natalia on uh, Thailand season one. Mm -hmm. Kylie Sneak Love, Speak of the Devil. Yeah. Spanky Jackson and Sasha Colby. Colby. This is knowing yourself, knowing your brand, being unapologetically you. There's lots of different like arcs here, right? We can't say, oh, everybody's a Bianca and didn't struggle. Spanky struggled every week on the runway. I was gonna say. She, she had a different type of struggle, but her raw talent was undeniable. Right, and Kylie had her own kind of up and down kind of journey, but really when she came back, she was super consistent. I think she only had low placement a couple times. Besides the um, freaking uh, table talk, which I still don't think she deserved that bottom. Mm -hmm. Like that was the only bottom she ever got where it wasn't like a, if you're not in the top, you're in the bottom. Right. So she really truly didn't actually bottom That's for true. real, for real ever. Like she was never bottom two worthy. Right, right. But, and, and that one, I just like, it was crazy. She was in the bottom. Her quote and the way she did that was, I mean, it's one of the most iconic ever, I think. Mm -hmm. I think she should have been a top literally for that one. Yeah. Anyway, we got roommates. Kylie and <gasps> Sasha were roommates oh at one God, time. Yeah, that's so crazy. I feel like the top two and then Sasha, they really had no struggles. You know, Natalia, yeah. she was pretty much, I don't know, breezing through a lot of the ways. And the, what, the, I feel and like <laughs> the one time they put her in the bottom, which was a mistake because she didn't do well in that lip sync. It was like one of those weird things where you won the challenge or like you're one of the best, but we just want to see what you can do in a lip sync. Or it was like more right. for funsies. Yeah. It was uh, silly. It was very silly. And Spanky did have a for real bottom, that first design challenge. But after that, right. I mean, the runway sometimes were still a mess, but it didn't matter because she was the girl in those challenges. I just... She brought the comedy to Down Under. The the common thread, I just figured out, with all of them, uh -huh. talent. Oh. They're just all oh just God. so... Yeah. Like the core of them is just so talented. Talent. They're entertainers. All of these queens are entertainers. Yeah. In their own way. Bianca's not gonna book, but she's gonna make you laugh. You know what I mean? And everybody's just so she, But she still makes it work for every way. I mean, yeah. she was in the top for a rap girl girl group challenge. She made it work for everything. Um, she really did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Up next thirty nine. Now we're, we go oh, wow. steeply. So we go from 37, where we had a bunch. It just falls off where we're just going to be one or two, and we're going to start skipping a bunch of ages because we right. just skipped 38. <laughs> Jimbo, last year, won All-Stars 8 at 39. It's kind of interesting that she does fall on her own because mm -hmm. the path she took is so unique mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, lip syncing for the wins and that always feeling so unfulfilling right. to weeks where certain times it's like, yeah, she won the maxi challenge, but I don't feel like she just won. Right. Because I'm disappointed again. Yeah, exactly. What the hell is that? Jimbo's journey is, is crazy. I mean, she was a robbed queen for most of her 
journey right. on Drag Race. And then came back, yeah, and even then it's like, damn, if it comes down to a lip sync, and I don't know. And she did she dominate the it. season. She really did, but, but it was it still questionable, right? It felt funny. It did, but I'm so glad like that she won, and it seems right, and it was a good um There's no question pen that she thing. just like freaking dominated the challengers. <laughs> right. Up next, 41 years old. Wow. We have two winners here, and talk about professionals. We got Chad Michaels, one of the best impersonators of all time, and yeah. then we have another Miss Continental, Vanessa Van Cartier, Holland season two. And the Paris Drag Mom. Right. Okay, so mom to mom, okay? It's crazy. <laughs> Dressed as a guy. <laughs> yes. They both are giving superhero vibes, for sure. Definitely superhero grind. vibes. But there wasn't like a story for, I feel like for either one of them, really, where you saw them coming. It felt like other girls had more uh, developed story arcs. Right, right. For what you would predict. They were like the quiet, consistent. Yeah. Well, very consistent. Yes, until well, until Vanessa had her meltdown about um, someone cheating. Yeah, which somebody is, cheating, which, which is, makes sense. Yeah, it's totally. But tracks. they they didn't even follow through with that. Right. I guess they gave her the win as <laughs> yeah. I said why. And it was the first time Kevin Minaj didn't go as far as she should have. Because when Vanessa won, I, we were all still mad, and some people are still mad to this day that Keta was cut the week before that's the finale. That's true, that's true. And that so. Vivaldi made it, and all sorts of crazies. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it was all silly. Her win then, almost got a little overshadowed by the all drama. of the other drama on the season. And got the franchise canceled. <laughs> Actually, they both ended their franchises. Uh-huh. Right. Chad's ended for five years after this. That's true. And, and Holland is still shut down to this day. Yeah, they're on other things. Very interesting. Yeah, very it's. I mean, it really is weird. I mean, we're pointing them out, and we're like, "Ooh, interesting." But some of these parallels are like, "Whoa, A that's weird." Like, hmm, that's right. Uncanny. Our runner-up for oldest queen to ever win was just last year. Yeah. Uh, captivating Cat Cat. Yeah. At Forty-two. Cat Cat. Philippines that's season right. two. She did come with her own drama. <laughs> she also belongs on her own. She has a journey of like a 21 year old in terms of the workroom drama Literally. and the way she behaved. Yes. But then when it came to the challenges, she was like a 37 year old. Literally, yeah, like giving you the utmost professional, professional giving you- Undeniable. Yes, I will say I loved her story arc. Not not the some of the fights and some of the drama because that was like- You have to like let that go. Stressful, right. But I love that she's the one that came in arguably with one of the biggest reputations ever, good one of the and worst. bad. One of the worst, right. And when she won, it was like, okay, yeah, like, she, it, it all seemed fair at the end. And it was cool because she got to go, she got to defend her super long drag career. That's the other thing, too. She'd been doing drag for, like, way over 20 years. I think it was well-deserved. That finale was one of the most, like, gripping. Her lip syncs are, like, it's, oh. she won her lip syncs every time. I know. Like, it's actually crazy. So. And she had that one really great one that was before the finale. Mm-hmm. The one time she, she, a classic, like, in the bottom right before the finale. Her and Bernie. Yeah. Uh, but, oof, that was incredible. And she's kind of unique, too, because she's almost giving you a villain edit winning. Yeah, which we haven't seen on this list since mm-hmm. we were looking at the 21-year-old. Right. Or even, I would argue maybe you could say the Vivian a little. That's true. Because yeah. she made Davina the underdog by, like, underrating oh, her. Oh, yeah, you're right. But, I mean, it's not, I mean, that's. Well, 21 times 2 is 42, right? Oh. There you go. So that takes us to our oldest winner of all time, mm-hmm. 45. Wow. Which is Sharon on wow. uh, season 2 of Espana. Espana. Kind of similar in some ways to Cat Cat, but the big reputation, slightly controversial, but she didn't get the, into fights or The anything. smoothest ride. And in fact, like anytime someone would be partnered up with her, they'd either win or be at the top two. Yeah. When it would when they'd be struggling the weeks, you know, before mm-hmm. and after. She had the golden touch. Right. But yeah, it came and she in she was with really a, good. She was really, really good. Came in with a big reputation, had a lot to defend, had a lot to potentially lose and she won. Looking back, because we've talked about all the Espana winners, including All Stars, they do always choose the person with the most maxi wins. Mm. They do, it, they have not broken that mold that Drag Race did actually follow as well for many years. Mm-hmm. For this next season, I feel like they probably need to deviate from one girl is like, uh, what do they what do they say? There's a phrase like about horses or something. Like one <sighs> queen is clearly like lapped the other girls. Oh. You know? She's so far ahead of the other girls. Oh, they can't like even see her. Them. And that's just like Carmen was, you know. Petita, yeah. obviously, she, her personality was controversial, but 
She was pretty clear cut yeah. to me too. Now it's time to take a look at our YouTube thanks. Tipping because it's Monday morning. It's now what, like Tuesday? Aww. Hopefully you had a good April Fool's Day. A lot of people tell me they, they wait to watch the Sunday one till Monday. Oh, till Monday, okay. Yeah. So I guess cool. Tex Aaron does that. Oh. Uh, I want to start my week and share some love with y'all. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And then new video idea inspired by this week, lip syncs one in the first 10 seconds. I'd have to like think. That would be there's... a hard one, but it's definitely happened before. Oh, definitely happened before. Mm. Chi Chi against Dorji. Just oh, yeah. the initial like look in her eye. So clear. I'm sure that. There's a lot of our face girls. Yes. Potentially could be on that. Oh, list. I wouldn't. I want to say Juju on season two, mm -hmm. like would win immediately. Love your channel. Helps me catch up with all the franchises. For you to know, Supreme's catchphrase that we were making fun of, like we were talking about last yeah. week, that, that we love that Samantha made I will fun never of. Change. They said it was from the Italia song, oh. and that the song uh, Mexican Queens performed at the finale last year. Oh, okay, cool. Thank but you. we've been talking about that for many, many years. And I want to say at some point someone told us that Talia's was just a cover. Wasn't it that lady who was a guest judge, Alaska? It's her song. Oh, it's her phrase. It? But a, it's a very covered song. Oh, cool. Well, thank you. Now I'm over here correcting them. <sighs> As um, they give you money. Before I edit that in. Right. Before I edit that in, I will uh, double check. Let us know what you think about today's topic. And if you think it clears up who's going to potentially win season... 16. 34. Are there any winners at 34? Yeah, there's three. Oh, see, it's Safira would totally fit she in. Would totally go with that. Safira them. and Isis Couture and mm -hmm. Ginger Johnson all make sense to me Safira in a timeline. Safira energy. Yeah. Fully. I have one last thing to say. Glad you got to see us. Bye. Bye.